Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son came into the world, that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that having this hope, we may purify ourselves as he is pure, that when he comes again with power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Our first reading is from the book of the Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom is radiant and, and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty, for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one's thought on her is perfect understanding, and one who is vigilant on her account will soon be free from care because she goes about seeking those worthy of her, and she grac graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. The word of the Lord. Let's read together Psalm 70 as found in your bulletin insert. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me and turn back, because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. The second reading is from Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call and the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven 
and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all of those bridesmaids got up and turned their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we will be recreated and you will renew the face of the earth. Amen. Living in Oklahoma, having the National Weather Service located on the OU campus, the forecasters are doing amazing work in tracking severe weather. Their equipment, technology, knowledge, and staff warn of potential weather disasters and the importance of being prepared. They are precise and the tracking is on point. As I was part of a group, um, Oklahoma had a group of lay and clergy. We were part of a disaster response team. So we got to go to the OU campus and to walk through the um, National Weather Service, and it was truly amazing the equipment they had and just talking with the personnel there and their knowledge. You felt safe. <laughs> you know, I felt, I left there thinking, okay, you know, we're always going to know when severe weather may come. I mean, it was just a gift for me. When tornadoes approached, they told us to go to our storm shelters and our home was, um, <clears throat> the closet in our home served as a storm room, storm shelter. So when the tornado went through in 2012, I and my cats went to the storm room and um, until the tornado passed by. Um, but they also, in terms of the 
the heat and the drought in Oklahoma and the high winds. I know we have high winds here too, but when there's no trees and everything is just open and that wind comes and everything that is dry blows and you have the sandstorms, the dust storms, um, and then the fires come. And the wildfires, they truly are wildfires that wreak havoc on people's, on the farmland and um, the farmers. But they would always advise us to have a bag by the door. And when I first moved there, I thought, well, that's kind of silly. You know, I'll, I'll be able, I'll be okay. <laughs> but my first experience of one of those wildfires It, you really did have to be prepared. You really, really did have to be prepared just as much as you are prepared for the tornadoes because you might wait to see what happens, but you had to be prepared to leave. So we learn to be ready in our lifetime, to be prepared, to be vigilant, we have working flashlights and batteries handy. We have candles and matches ready if you lose power, no matter what season of the year. So far here, I haven't experienced anything that was frightening. Um, so I'm kind of speaking from my experience in Oklahoma. But even in our day-to-day -day living, we are asked to be ready. We are asked to be prepared. Sometimes in doing that, we are needing to wait. Um, when you place an order to, or you're wanting to talk to customer service, we are told to wait because our call is very important. <laughs> <laughs> and you wait, and you wait, and you wait. Before I moved here, I had to call AT&T to stop my phone service. And it took four phone calls, four different representatives. I will admit I got impatient after the first call and I just hung up. But, um, and it took almost four hours to get that worked out. So we are... We do find ourselves in situations where we're needing to be ready and prepared, and then we wait. And getting doctor's appointments. You are needing a doctor's appointment, and you call, and you're needing to wait a month, a couple weeks, before you are able to see a doctor. And sometimes this waiting period can become stressful or difficult. In Matthew 24, the disciples questioned Jesus about what will be the sign of his coming. What will be the sign of the end of the age? And Jesus wanted them to hear from him, to hear the truth, and not be deceived by others who would come and pretend that they understood or that they knew the end of the age. Because Jesus said, no one knows the day or the hour. And on some extent, we can say, well, this knowledge is not that important. We want to know, but that knowledge is not that important because the parable that Jesus tells is saying to us that you don't need to know when it is. That's not what is important. What is important is, will you be ready? Will you be prepared? Will your heart be in the right place? Will your mind have an understanding of who is coming? Today's gospel is the first of four parables, and it is about a wedding feast and being prepared, being vigilant. 
The focus of the parable are ten bridesmaids, and their role is key to the safety of the groom, and sometimes the safety of the bride and groom, to bring them to the wedding feast. Once the bridegroom arrives, the lights of the bridesmaids' lamps lead the bridegroom to the wedding banquet. There is uncertainty, though, as to when he will arrive, um, so they need to come prepared. We are told that there were ten bridesmaids, five foolish and five were wise. The wise took flasks of oil so that in the delay of the bridegroom they were prepared. They were able to lead the bridegroom to the wedding banquet. And it was at night. But the foolish only brought their lamps. And even though they asked the wise to share, it's not that the wise were being unkind, but sometimes we need to learn from our actions. And they knew their role was important. They knew that they needed to bring safety to the bridegroom as they traveled. The foolish leave to get more oil and to return, but only to find the door is shut. And they will not be let in because the bridegroom does not know them. Does not know them. We do not know the time of Jesus coming, of the end of the age. Yet, like for the disciples, that information is not important to us. It is, again, in terms of how we live our lives. As followers of the risen Christ and being led by the Holy Spirit, it is how we live our lives. What do we say yes to? What do we know that is expected of us? How do we practice the presence of God that is within us, that spirit, that wisdom that guides us? How do we practice that presence of God within us each and every day? How do we become vigilant as we look for God in the world? How do we seek wisdom, that deep understanding of who God is in our lives and in the world? Wisdom takes time, a lifetime of living. It requires that we stop, look, and focus that we be attentive to life and to God's presence. Our lives are so active, constantly on the move. It is difficult to receive and respond in a way that is reflective. Sometimes we're just on the go and we cannot take that time or choose not to take that time to sit and be reflective, to be life-giving, to keep our lights burning, to give our time to God. Wisdom does not come from getting it right all the time. Humility, which we learn from our mistakes is knowing our knowing our place in relationship with God with others and creation wisdom does come from acknowledging our wrong remembering how we got it wrong 
or how we are prone sometimes to getting life wrong. But it is only then that wisdom can enlighten. Wisdom is remembering that we are not God, that we are not the source of wisdom, but recipients of this gift from God when we are open to receive her. Wisdom helps us to figure out what matters and makes us instrument instruments of God's peace, grace, hope, mercy, and unconditional love. Wisdom helps us to figure out what matters and makes us instruments of God's gifts. In the words of the first reading today, we hear a vivid description of wisdom, an invitation to seek her and to learn from her, to receive the gifts of her presence in our lives, to grow in understanding, and I'm going to add to become a better human being. I want to end by reading the wisdom of Solomon. I will do that. But I invite you to take this home. I, what, um, in my trials, in my temptations in life, it has been wisdom when I'm sitting in silence or in prayer or um, frustration with myself, when I'm really listening, it is wisdom that has gotten me through. And reading this this week over and over, it it is important for us to take time to breathe, to slow down, to open our hearts, and to receive God's wisdom. And so I invite you to take this home and read it once in a while this week. Hear these words of God's wisdom. Wisdom is radiant and unfading, and she is easily discerned by those who love her and is found by those who seek her. She hastens to make herself known to those who desire her. One who rises early to seek her will have no difficulty for she will be found sitting at the gate. To fix one's thoughts on her is perfect understanding, and one who is vigilant on her account will soon become, will soon be free from care, because she goes about seeking those worthy of her and she graciously appears to them in their paths and meets them in every thought. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, 
in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers for the people. It's Form 3 be found on page 387 of the Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, especially in the Anglican cycle of prayer for the Lariga Angelican de Mocambig of Angola. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, especially Jessica and Bob, our wardens, Connie, Deanna, Robin, Sharon, our vestry. For those in the armed forces, and especially those deployed, Mikey, Raina, Mayas. In our parish cycle of prayer, Mike and Sally Lovell and family, Tom and Jessica Markham and family. For those selling breast birthdays, celebrating birthdays, Natasha Spencer and Tom Hollingstead. That the name be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, especially for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Mary, our priest that they may be faithful, faithful ministers, ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who have given, who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there, that there may, may be justice, justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, including Johanny, Jervis, Anastasia, Bob and Sharon Alioto, Deanna Chrisman, George Chrisman, Jane Clothier, Harry Davis, Patricia Hoffman, Sue Hollingstead, Connie Herrick, Wayne Herrick, Sharon Johnson, Cindy Lawrence, Mary Nichols, Jerry Ramsey, David Toretta, Jimmy, Jimmy Yanni, Bob and Joe Yorn. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Ex perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we command your servant Elaine, Grandma Monty. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in life. Grant to her family comfort, support, love in their grieving, May they know that Elaine is with you and in peace. Amen. Amen. O Lord our God, accept the burning prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us 
and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our faith. Thank you. 